This Android malware can use OCR to steal data. The SEC will require hack disclosures in four days, and almost one million routers are vulnerable to hacks. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morris, and this is ThreatWire for August 1st, 2023. This is your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Let's go ahead and jump right into the news this week. New Android malware was just discovered, allowing attackers to steal cryptocurrency, scam users, and potentially steal data from images and photos. First up, there's this new Android malware strain called Cherry Bloss, discovered by Trend Micro. This malware can use Optical Character Recognition, or OCR for short, to snatch credentials displayed on your phone screen. It's being spread through social media and it's currently lurking on the Google Play Store. Once it's on your device, it tricks you into granting it accessibility permissions, giving it full control to steal your crypto wallet credentials, and even replace copied wallet addresses with addresses controlled by the attackers. And that's not all. It can also scan your images to find wallet recovery phrases or potentially passwords. Trend Micro also discovered a related campaign called Fake Trade with 31 scam apps on the Google Play Store. Now these apps promised increased income through referrals and top-ups, but whenever users try to withdraw their funds from their digital wallets in the apps, they can't. Fake trade apps are targeting users in Malaysia, Indonesia, Vietnam, Uganda, Mexico, and the Philippines, and they were uploaded to the Google Play Store from 2021 all the way up through 2022. Trend Micro suspects that both malware campaigns were created by the same group as they share the same C2 network infrastructure and certificates. Now, malware authors are constantly finding new ways to target unsuspecting users, and it's not just limited to Android either. Spy Spyware and stalkerware is also on the rise, and we recently learned about a surveillance application called SpyHide, which stealthily collects private phone data from nearly 60,000 different Android devices worldwide since it began in 2016, and some users have been spied on for years with multiple devices being tracked. So what can you do to protect yourself? Well, first and foremost, be cautious about the apps that you are downloading. Stick to official applications from the Google Play store whenever possible, and double check the developer information and app reviews to ensure the legitimacy of those apps. Pro tip, there's nothing stopping threat actors from creating bogus developer accounts on the Play Store to distribute malware, so doing research on the developers themselves is also a great step. Now, Google is taking some steps to address this issue of Google Play Store problems by requiring new developer accounts to provide a valid DUNS or DUNS number before submitting apps. This move aims to build user trust, and it will be implemented on August 31st. 2023. The U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, aka the SEC, has adopted new rules requiring publicly traded companies to disclose cyber attacks within four business days if they are considered material incidents, which are ones that could influence shareholders' investment decisions. This means more transparency for investors and better understanding of cybersecurity risk management and strategy. These rules also apply to foreign private issuers as well. So what do these new rules exactly entail? Well, listed companies now have to include specific details about cyber attacks in their periodic report filings, particularly on a form called 8K. The disclosure should cover the incident's nature, the scope, timing, and its impact on the company's operations. The goal is to provide prompt notifications to ensure the investors know about what's happening and improve transparency. But there is a bit of a grace period for smaller companies. They get an additional whopping 180 days before they have to provide a Form 8K disclosure, and in some cases, the disclosure timeline can be postponed if it poses a significant risk to national security or public safety. 
The SEC chair, Gary Gensler, believes that consistent and comparable disclosure will benefit both companies and their investors. It will help them make better informed decisions and create more transparency on the markets. But of course, some challenges will lie ahead. Smaller companies might find it tough to meet the new disclosure standards due to limited resources. On the other hand, cybersecurity experts believe that determining material in a cyber attack can actually be kind of tricky. Organizations may struggle to quantify the risk at broad and granular levels. Now, due to the tighter time frame, some experts worry that companies might rush to disclose breaches, leading to inaccurate or incomplete information. Other countries have varying time frames are ready for disclosure from 24 hours all the way up to 72 hours. The new rules will go into effect in December, or 30 days after publishing in the Federal Register. In the end, companies must have repeatable and well-documented incident response plans, including communication plans, procedures, and requirements for handling breaches, which they should have anyway. Nevertheless, this move is a significant step towards greater transparency and accountability in the face of cyber threats. It's an effort to close those gaps in cybersecurity defense and disclosure practices and strengthen defenses against data theft and intrusions. Biggest of shout outs to my Patreon supporters, especially my golden s'mores and their fur babies for making this show possible since we do not have YouTube ads on this show at all. And a big thank you to Larry M and Daily Tech News Show for being a part of the s'mores at patreon.com slash Shannon Morris. That is my new Patreon page for the show. I will be including and posting all of the perks for patrons over there, including early access to this very video. If you are currently a patron on the threat wire page, don't forget to switch over to the new page so you don't lose access to all those perks that you currently get. And if you didn't know, I actually guest host on Daily Tech News Show, which is our new Patreon, from time to time to chat cybersecurity news. And you can find that show over at dailytechnewsshow.com. It's a daily show, it's really good. And all the major podcast platforms, including here on YouTube, are all places that you can subscribe to Daily Tech News Show as well. Let's go ahead and finish out today's episode with my last top story, which is all about Mikrotik. Over 900,000 Mikrotik router OS routers are at risk due to a critical flaw, and this vulnerability is known as CVE-2023-30799. This could allow attackers to gain full control over the device without being detected. So here's how it works. This flaw enables remote attackers with an existing admin account to elevate their privileges to a super admin level via the device's WinBox or HTTP interface. Now this might sound like it's a high bar to clear, but unfortunately Unfortunately, it's actually not. Mikrotik Router OS does not prevent password brute force attacks, and it ships with a default admin user, which makes it easier for attackers to gain unauthorized access in the first place. So if an attacker escalates their privileges, it gives them full access to the Router OS operating system. This is especially valuable to threat actors who may want to make significant changes to the system or hide their activities from detection. Now, while N mass exploitation might be difficult since valid credentials are required, there's still a concern because the routers lack those basic protections against password guessing. There's nearly 60% of Mikrotik devices that still use the default admin account, even though the vendor suggests deleting it which tells us a lot. Now, a patch for this vulnerability was released back in October 2022 for the router OS stable version and on July 19th, 2023 for the long-term version. However, the impact is still huge. Over 474,000 devices were found vulnerable through the web-based management page, but get this, 926,000 devices exposed the management port through Winbox, making the impact a lot bigger. Now, Volncheck, which is the company that disclosed the vulnerability, developed an exploit that bypasses the requirement for FTP interface exposure, and it works through the web interface. So if you own one of these devices, patch them immediately by applying the latest update. That would be version 6.49.8 or 7.x. And if possible, just remove administrative interfaces from the internet, restrict those login IP addresses to an allow list,
list and disable Winbox and only use SSH and configure SSH to use public and private keys instead of passwords. It's crucial to act really fast because attempts to exploit this flaw are likely to increase very soon. I'm Shanna Morris, stay vigilant, stay secure, and I will see you on the internet.